there are cases in which we want to access the positions that we have currently opened. For instance, to modify one of these positions, or to restrict the ability of our expert advisor to open new positions, checking that there are no open positions by that expert advisor. Let's say that the entry signal for our expert advisor was to open a short position when the price closes below the moving average. And only that, if that was the case, then we would open a short position here, and again here, and again here, and here, and on every one of these bars. Now, to prevent that, you can code an entry signal such as the one that we have right now, or you can review the positions that you have currently opened to make sure that there are no open positions by the expert advisor. By doing that, you would make sure that you only open a position the first time you get the entry signal. Now, what happens when you send an order? When you send an order to the market, that order will be received by the trade server, and when it is executed, then you will get a deal. And that deal will either open a new position or modify a currently one. Orders, deals, and positions, each one has an identifier. And the identifier that we want to use to review positions is the position ticket. You can see the position ticket for these positions that we have currently opened here. And what we are going to do is access every one of the positions that we have currently opened, and then check the magic number of these positions. And if we find one position with the magic number that our expert advisor has, then we will not allow opening any new trade. So let's enable here the magic number. There it is. So we will select each of these positions by their ticket. And once we select one position by their ticket, we can retrieve information from that position. And we will retrieve the magic number of that position and check that magic number against the magic number of our expert advisor. So let's do that. Here we are at our expert advisor. Let's move to the global scope of the program. And here, let's just code a function that will check the positions that we have currently opened and return true if there are no currently open positions with our magic number. So, since this has to return true or false, this will be a boolean function. We will name that check placed positions. And we need the magic number, right? So we will pass here the magic number. So this is a function declaration. Now let's do the definition. For the definition, again, let's start declaring a boolean variable here that will be the variable that we will return. And let's initialize this to false. Now, to loop through all of the positions that we have currently open, we have to use a for operator. So let's use a for operator. We are going to loop through all of the positions that we have currently opened, and we can do that using the predefined function positions total. So let's declare the, an integer variable i, and we will assign the value of positions total to that variable. Now, since the positions pool are uh, arranged in indexes, we have to diminish this by one, because one of all positions will be index zero, and the other index one, and index two, and so on. So Positions total, it returns the total number of open positions, right? But when we are accessing the positions that, there, that are currently opened, each position has an index. So again, since one of the positions is in index 0, we need to diminish the total positions by 1. We will loop while the index is greater than or equal to 0. So this way we include the index 0. and Every time the loop uh, goes to the end, we will diminish the value of index by 1. 
Now, what are we going to do here? Well, first of all, we retrieve the ticket of the position of the index that we are looping through. So, first, we will declare a new variable, position ticket, and here we will store the position ticket. Now that we have the position ticket of index i, we are going to select that position by its ticket. So we call the function position select by ticket. And here we pass the position ticket. So here we retrieve the ticket number of the position of index i. And here we select the position of this ticket. And you need to select a position to then retrieve information of that position. So right now we have selected the position of this ticket. And what we are going to do is retrieve the magic number. And for that we use position get integer. And position magic. Now we have the magic number of that position, and what we have to do is check that magic number against the magic number of our expert advisor. So we will say that if post magic equals to a parameter magic, then this means that there is currently one position opened by this expert advisor. So we will change the value of placed positions to true. And we will break the for operator. And here, finally, what we will do is return the placed positions variable. OK, let's compile. It compiles OK. Now let's do a quick recap. First, we declare a variable named place positions, and we assign the value of false. That variable will be the one that we return in the function. Now, what we do next is looping through all of the positions that we have currently opened in MetaTrader. Every position has an index, and to loop through them, we use the predefined function position total that will tell us the number of positions that we have currently opened. But since every position has an index, we have to diminish this by one because there will be a position in index zero. Then we will loop through them while our index is greater than or equal to zero. And every time a loop finish, then we will decrease the value of the index by one. Now, what we do within the for operator? Well, here, the first thing we do is getting the ticket of the position that we are currently looping through. So the ticket of the position in index i. Then we select the position by its ticket. And when we have a position selected, then we can retrieve information from that position using the position get integer, position get double, or position get string functions, for instance. And in this case, since we are interested in the magic number, we use the position get integer to retrieve the magic number. And we store that magic number in the post magic variable. Now that we have the position magic number, what we have to do is check that position magic number against the magic number of our expert advisor. And if they match, then we change the value of place positions to true. We break the for operator and we return the value of place positions. Now, the only thing left to do is to call this function. So we go here to our expert advisor. And in the entry signal, here is where we want to limit the ability of our expert advisor to only open trades when there are no trades opened by this expert advisor. So here, what we will do is the following. So we will check that we have an entry signal long or short, and this will be the first that we will check. But then we will also check for the place positions. So we will say that check place position, and here we pass the magic number equals false. 
So now this is checking that we have an entry signal and then this is checking that currently there are no positions placed by this expert advisor. And this is how we can access information from the positions that we have currently opened and we are using this information in this case to restrict the ability of our expert advisor to open positions to these cases in which there are no currently open positions by this expert advisor.